If you think you're safe from malware just because you're careful, think again. From myths about Mac and Linux immunity to dangerous beliefs about antivirus software, the truth might shock you and it could cost you. In this video, we're exposing the most common malware myths that hackers hope you believe. I'm your host, Nico, and let's dive in. Nico knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech, number one channel with the news on check. While it is true, and I must admit, that many free antivirus programs are often just as good as paid ones when it comes to post-infection removal, meaning that when you're already infected, removing the virus after the fact. But when it comes to real-time protection and advanced threat detection, firewall, and VPN, that is more of a premium feature. In addition, most free antivirus companies rely on open source definitions and signatures. This means that they typically have to wait 30 days after a threat is detected by another company before they get access to that free open source definition. So this presents a problem in the event of a zero day infection, a new virus that no one's ever seen before. If that detection is detected by another company, the free antivirus company may not have access to it for another 30 days. This video isn't sponsored, but if you want my recommendation, I use ESET every day on all my machines and you can get the best deals at the link in description. Let's get back to it. The myth that Apple products have never been affected by viruses has never been true. However, it used to be presumptive that you would be much more secure on Apple products in the past, but as of late, a lot has changed. In the mid to late 2000s, Apple launched a clever marketing campaign that emphasized that it was not affected by malware aimed at the Windows ecosystem. And that is true. But with the growing popularity of Mac OS and iOS, threat actors have victimized millions of Apple users in the last year alone. Hey, and folks at Apple, don't even bother suing me. I mean, it's not defamation if it's true. Sorry. Yes, Linux gets malware. A lot of it. For the most part, the way Linux is designed makes it inherently more secure than Windows due to its permission, access, and the way it just works. You kind of have to tell a virus to infect you in most cases. And in the past, they mostly targeted major assets such as servers, but due to the massive popularity that Linux has been gaining, there is a lot more malware attacking the everyday user. Even UEFI bootkits, such as this one, have been targeting the Linux community. Practically every day I'm on any run testing new threats and it seems it's only going to get worse. No, that's not true at all. While a factor reset is very effective at removing many kinds of malware and maybe even in most cases I will say that, but as long as you don't have a persistent rootkit or other type of persistent malware, fileless malware, or some virus that runs on a RAM disk or hides on a uh, an unused sector of the system drive, I mean there's countless ways that viruses have learned to persist because they know that the average user nowadays knows how to reset their machine. So there is a lot of persistent malware out there. A lot of ITs will tell me and they'll tell everybody that they will only trust a format and re-image, meaning you delete everything on the hard drive, re-image it, repartition it, and then reinstall the operating system. And that is more effective at uh, than a reset. However, that's not the only way that something can persist. In fact, in the old days, there was MBR and BCD threats, and now there are even firmware threats and other types of threats that can resist even a, uh, a re-image in some cases. Those are more rare, but uh, in general, resetting back to factory settings alone is not 100%. Well, you could in some cases, however, many viruses make it difficult for you to do that, but Many advanced users can still find a way to delete the primary infection. However, modern threats rarely are limited to the primary executable. In fact, that's usually just the way onto the system. And the main payload is downloaded or dropped, as we say in the business. And deleting one file may not do anything. In fact, it may the primary payload may be operating as uh, an injection in a regular process. So it's now invisible to in most cases. So deleting the file can actually get you in trouble. In fact, uh, the way modern operating systems such as Windows 10 and newer are have kind of an AI. And if you start going through system 32 and taking ownership and forcing 
the ability to delete things as a regular user, Windows often will detect you as a threat because you're accessing things that the system thinks you shouldn't be messing with and you're forcing permissions to allow you to delete things. Uh, you can often get lose your permissions and certain access to parts of the computer. And this is a main reason why I tell people stay out of the Windows files because Windows may detect you as a threat if you're violating policies of the operating system and you may get an access is denied error next time you try and access that folder. You can even get locked out of your personal folders if you keep doing that. So typically you want to use virus removal tools, which I've done many videos on, because those operate at a higher permissions than the normal user using File Explorer. Because File Explorer is just an interface there. It doesn't really have a whole lot of high permissions, such as a virus scanner, perhaps, that is operating at system privileges. So in general, this is a myth. Perhaps in the past this was true, but for that to be true today, being careful would have to mean that you only download programs directly from the Microsoft Store or Adobe or the usual suspects, and you never use a search engine, and you never communicate with anybody online. Because the way viruses are transmitted now, you simply travel to a specific web page, and oftentimes the web page can infect you. And then phishing has become so effective that you can't actually tell the difference many times between a legitimate banking site or a fake banking site unless you do a bit of digital forensics and verify the address and do a bit of checking there. And so you don't have to be a ignorant person to get infected. In fact, I know very many tech savvy people who get infected simply because the internet is not a safe place. So we do have to take precautions. That is kind of like saying, I don't need to carry a gun in the Wild West as long as I'm careful. Uh, no, there's people with guns everywhere and there's people who want to take your stuff. So eventually that gun may be necessary. So do you want to be careful or do you want to carry a gun? So I always recommend that people take their security seriously. Technically, no. A VPN in and of itself does not block malware. That's not what it's designed for. However, when I say technically, there are some VPN providers which also include a feature of malware scanning or malware protection. And in my opinion, this is actually a compensation for a very big weakness of VPN. And I will explain. When you use a VPN, you are encrypting traffic that you are sending as well as receiving. Your antivirus and security is supposed to be looking at traffic that is incoming and looking for viruses or other threats. When you encrypt that traffic that is coming into your computer, your virus scanner cannot see it until it's decrypted on your computer and it may be too late. So actually a VPN will weaken your security against malware in general. But I still recommend VPN because it does a different type of threat protection, which is your privacy and a man-in-the-middle attack. A man-in-the-middle attack is most simply described as, imagine that you're in Starbucks on a public Wi-Fi, and there is a hacker in the room watching people's traffic on this unencrypted open Wi-Fi. Well, they could theoretically intercept your traffic before it gets loaded into HTTPS and encrypted. So in that case, a VPN would encrypt it immediately after it left your computer, and Starbucks, the hackers, anyone around cannot see what that traffic is. They can only see that it is an encrypted tunnel. So in general, VPN is a security upgrade. However, it doesn't do that as far as malware goes. So I think it is good to still observe caution and realize that your antivirus actually works better without VPN However, your communications could be intercepted if you're on someone else's Wi-Fi, theoretically. So I still think VPN is a very good thing, and it does protect a different part of you, which is your anonymity. So you don't want every computer you connect to to know your home IP address. Very important, because there's more wolves out there on the internet than just viruses. There are people that want to do you harm. So in general, this is a myth, but I still recommend it. And congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this video entertaining and maybe informative. If there's any myths that you think I missed or any that you think I got wrong, tell me about it in the comment section. 
I hope you like this video. If you like it, please smash that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. And I shall see you next time.